Um, I'm Bridget Kelly Deering, and I'm reading off my phone, so um, I might be looking down a bit, but um, I live in Rockbridge County, um, and I run Preserve Rockbridge, which is an organization that's dedicated to stopping both the Mountain Valley and the Atlantic Coast Pipeline. I wanted to present my brother's testimony today. I'm sorry, I'm too close. His name is Sean Kelly, and he lives just over the one-mile blast zone of the Mountain Valley Pipeline's crossing on Bottom Creek and Bent Mountain. Sean has given me permission to speak for him today as he was unable to attend this meeting. I nearly canceled my testimony today because I didn't really feel like it was what the tribunal was looking for. Sean's not really poor, and... He doesn't live in a marginalized community. Um, but he is a product of Appalachia. My family hails from West Virginia, and Sean has lived all of his life in Southwest Virginia. Um, I'm sorry, my, my family is from West Virginia. Just, um, I, he has lived all of his life in Southwest Virginia, both of us have growing up. Um, Montgomery County, primarily. Our families are Scotch-Irish descendants. Our ancestors chose Appalachia, Virginia to raise their families many generations ago. My grandmother, Georgia Epling, was born in Camp Creek, West Virginia, but the Eplings moved to Pembroke in Giles County and later Montgomery County. We also have family history in Pennsylvania County. Sean is blue collar and he works 60 hours a week, every week, in a car dealership as a service manager. He's opposed to the Mountain Valley Pipeline, but he works so many hours a week that he feels overwhelmed by the pipeline and doesn't have time from work to resist it. I've used his name in most of my testimony to FERC and the DEQ at public comment hearings. I wish you could hear that man's Southwest Virginia accent. I have none of it. I don't know how he kept it, but he's got it. I was going to present his story as an Appalachian or rural Virginian. I want people like Sean's stories to be heard. Blue collar workers who find themselves unable to resist the pipelines because they're working way too many hours so they can live and retire on the land they love. Sean and his wife Sandy will have to get around the Mountain Valley Pipeline construction at Bottom Creek on Bent Mountain two times a day to work at their jobs. After the pipeline is built, they will sleep in their beds every night just on the other side of the one mile blast zone. Bottom Creek will be severely impacted by the Mountain Valley Pipeline, aside from its aesthetic beauty, which it is gorgeous, like so many of the land, Spruce Creek and Nelson. Um, Anyway, um, aside from that, the creek contains brook trout and log perch, which are endangered species, and the DEQ is required to protect them, and the creek they inhabit. Um, just give me the one-minute warning here. So I'm skipping down here. But I just want to say um, that really the, the DEQ is not considering cumulative effects of all the pollution sources. And, and that is, um, uh, the DEQ conducts cumulative impact analysis for all other individual reviews of regulated polluting activities. Why would they not do the same for the pipelines? It is the cumulative effects of all sources that will determine whether standards can be met and the DEQ cannot ignore other factors, even if they are not explicitly covered in this review. Many people like Sean and his wife Sandy are being sacrificed while they work overtime to live on this beautiful land that they cherish and steward so well. And I thank you for hosting this and for um, con considering my testimony. Thank you.